On their release back in 2023, Earfans Air Pro 3 were getting accolades from almost every reviewer across the globe. But if you've been staying in touch with this channel for over a year, then you'll know that I wasn't one of them. It wasn't that they were necessarily a bad product overall. They were a little bit bulky in the ear and they did suffer a little with occlusion. But the main problem was the very bloated sound signature, which you would struggle quite a bit to fix even with the EQ. That feedback for earphone must have stung a little bit, but they were super professional when they contacted me, reassuring me that with the Air Pro 4, all of these problems would be fixed. But have they? Well, by the end of this review, hopefully you're going to find out. Coming up, we're going to take a look at amendments that they've made to the design of the case and the buds themselves. We've got binaural sound tests and ANC samples, as well as call tests in busy London locations. And there'll be comparisons throughout to all of the big hitters in that sub $100 category. The Air Pro 4 retails at £79.99, pence, but I've left a voucher code here in the description that will take the price down to $59.99. Let's look at some of those headline features and start with the active noise cancellation. Earfun claim that the Air Pro 4 is reducing up to 50 dB of environmental sound. That's quite an increase from the 43 dB offered by the Air Pro 3, so I was expecting quite a big improvement. And what better way to put that claim to the test than a binaural recording of how effective the active noise cancellation is in a busy coffee shop Coming up, you're going to hear for yourselves in comparison to the Soundcore Liberty 4 NC and the Edifier Neobuds Pro 2, two of the better performers in this price category. So a short clip but hopefully gives you some idea to the Air Pro 4's capabilities when it comes to active noise cancellation. Compared with the Liberty 4 NC, I felt like it wasn't quite as strong at lower frequency sounds but was more consistent across the full frequency range. The Neobuds Pro 2 is another that has a similarly consistent approach across the full frequency spectrum but I felt like the Air Pro 4 was a little bit stronger. It means we have a change towards the top of the table when it comes to overall active noise cancellation strength with the Earfun Air Pro 4 taking second place only just behind the Liberty 4 NC just purely because of how strong the L4 NC is with those lower frequencies. This time Earfun have included some different ANC modes including a couple of AI adaptive functions which could be useful if you're changing seating quite frequently, but personally I just ended up leaving strong ANC on. The wind noise cancelling feature does work quite well, although it doesn't reduce too many other sounds alongside it. I put the wind noise reduction mode to the test whilst I was out on the bike, which I think off the top of my head is the main reason that you would want to use it, and it did make cycling with the Air Pro 4 a much more pleasant experience. The transparency mode isn't quite as good as the active noise cancellation though, it's certainly better than something like the Soundcore Liberty 4 NC, but when it comes to conversations, it doesn't necessarily let everything through as clearly as you would like. And with the absence of any additional strength settings when it comes to transparency mode, that puts it still in the top 10, but a little way behind some of the better performers. The charge case, in my opinion, is a massive improvement over the original as well. It still supports wireless charging, but it also has a quick charge feature, giving you an additional three hours playtime from just five minutes juice. Earfun have trimmed down the dimensions and the weight, making it much more pocket friendly too. There's no drastic changes to the design of the bud, although the stem is a little bit shorter and sleeker. The capacitive touch control ring at the top of the stem is very responsive and they aren't prone to accidental touches. No point going through what those controls are because within the Earfun app you've got full control customization over each of those touches including single, double, triple and long press. There aren't too many buds, especially in this price category, that give you that level of customization and Earfun haven't just stopped at the controls. From the main page you can toggle in ear detection, albeit only on or off, and you can also adjust on which side the microphone is active. 
If you want those people who's sensitive to the volume of your voice prompts, you can change that as well. And you can even change the language to Japanese or Chinese. But back to the design, despite the changes, it is still ever so slightly bulky and a bit cumbersome. Comparing it to OnePlus Buds Pro, for example, the profile is quite a bit thicker, although it's still not a deep insertion bud, so it just sticks out of your ears a little bit, which is more visible from the front profile. Whilst it doesn't look bad, it is slightly unrefined compared to some of its peers, but it is still an improvement from the Air Pro 3. They've maintained their IPX5 water and sweat resistance rating, meaning they're absolutely fine for using in the gym. And that weird fit we saw earlier that goes against the grain with current TWS releases means that they pass the jumping jack test with flying colours easily reaching 100 and I could have probably gone on to 200 and they still wouldn't have budged a bit. There is a drawback to the design though and that is the occlusion effect which was also present in the Air Pro 3 and it manifests particularly when you're on the treadmill or out for a run where you'll hear the thud against the surface pounding back through the earbuds. There is a way to lessen the effect slightly to use a flatter ear tip like this one which comes with the Soundbeats Air Pro 4. I've been using this as a temporary solution because the stock tips have been absolutely fine in everything else except for running. You can also feel the occlusion effect a little bit when you're on calls, although that can be lessened slightly by putting the buds into transparency mode. It's kind of difficult to do it with the controls because you might end up cutting the caller off. However, you can do it in the app just fine and it will switch you over into transparency straight away. The Air Pro 3 were pretty good for calls and this is how the Air Pro 4 sound in a very quiet scene where you've been able to reduce all of those ambient sounds around you. They feature CVC-8 noise reduction technology and six mics to try and reduce those ambient sounds around you. And in a moment, you're gonna hear how they perform in extremely busy indoor and outdoor scenes. First up, we're to the Airpunk Air Pro 4 in a busy indoor scene. Having the usual coffee shop where I've said all of my studio here is for calls. This has adds a little bit of consistency. We've got a mixture of music coming through. We've got the sound of interesting chatter and conversations you are by. We're surprisingly busy in here with the weekend. Uh, so we've also found the brisk of making coffee. It's all the usual sound techniques that will complicate your voice call in this kind of scene. So we're testing the Airfront Air Pro 4 this time in a busy outdoor scene where you've got a mixture, a little bit of wind coming through, which is good to tell by my hair. We've also got a mixture of different vehicles coming through. Uh, you've got lots of cyclists here. You've got buses coming through, cars coming through. There's lots of people here as well. If you look there in the background, you see. So you've got the indistinct chatter also playing a part in the scene. If you're using these for the daily commute, this is how you can expect the Airfun Air Pro 4 to perform. And the next scene is Borough Market in London on the weekend. Thousands of people and the busiest scene of the lot. Have a listen to just how loud it was. So we're testing the outdoor call performance on the Airbun Air Pro 4. And I'm in Borough Market here in London. It is extremely busy. Uh, you've got all sorts of different noises. You've got supercar or something, revving its engine. You've got loads and loads of people as well. So you've got the noise of indistinct chatter from literally thousands of people. I mean, look around. It is incredibly noisy. So I've been tested their core performance so far. I've been really impressed with the noise reduction. And this will be the acid test to see if it can manage to isolate your voice from all of these mixture of sounds which are going on around me. So as you heard there, the Air Pro 4 performed reasonably well on calls, albeit some way behind the leaders in this field, the likes of the Huawei FreeBuds Pro 3 and the Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 Pro. Funnily enough, they seem to perform best in the busiest scene, that scene in Borough Market where it was crazy noisy. It just seemed to handle the environmental noise best and also elevated your voice sufficiently that you were coming through quite clearly. The opposite was true in the coffee shop where it struggled to deal with the ambient sound and it also nullified your own voice a little bit. So it depends on how you're planning on using these. If you're one of those people who stops a lot in coffee shops or similar busy noisy indoor scenes to make or take your calls, you might wanna look elsewhere. But generally the performance for calls is on par with pretty much everything else around this sort of price, not particularly outstanding 
in any area. The improvement that we really want to see though and the bit you will be waiting for is the sound. And first up, you're going to hear a binaural sound test so you can listen to what they're going to sound like for yourselves before we take a look at the frequency response measurements and see how it's changed from the Air Pro 3. So a very short clip there, but hopefully long enough for you to hear there's a very different musical experience to the Air Pro 3. And for me, it is definitely a marked improvement. The bass was the problem area for the Air Pro 3 in that there was so much of it that there was absolutely no texture to it and no detail. I know some people like that sort of sound, but it really isn't for me. The Air Pro 4, I feel like, is a much more grown up, a much more mature, more musical sort of sound that still doesn't lack dynamism. It has a warm tonal balance thanks to pretty much hugging the Harman target all the way through to the presence region where it tails off a little bit early, this time avoiding the trap of a peak between 4 and 5k. And as a result, you've got a smoother, warmer sound. There's good depth and body to male vocalists, baritones in particular. And female vocals are prominent, but this time they're not surrounded by sharp stabs from percussion, as was the case with the peaky trebles on the Air Pro 3. Don't let the difference in the graphs fool you into thinking that this set doesn't have any bass. It does have plenty, although it's concentrated more in the mid bass than in the sub bass. So it feels like you're getting much more tactility and much more texture. The bass is much more controlled, although it's not completely tightly controlled. You do have a little bit of bleed into the lower mids. Even so, if you like energetic genres like house and techno, there's still plenty of thump to your kick drums. The transparent mid-range though here is probably the highlight with a natural tonality to both instruments and vocals. The low and mid trebles are also very well controlled. There is just about enough definition to your percussive elements, although it does admittedly lack a little shimmer. It shows a growing maturity from Earfun in that they recognize you got some constraints in a TWS with a single driver arrangement, but they're boxing clever and they're getting the most out of those constraints. It's not quite the kind of sound that will have you dancing around your living room or anything like that, but for long listening sessions when you're on the daily commute or you're on a flight, this kind of tuning is absolutely ideal. My only gripe is it could be a little bit more immersive. The staging is quite moderate. Everything is very much right in front of you. Comparing the sound to some of those similarly priced options, if we take the Liberty 4 NC from Soundcore first, that's a set which is much more focused on lots of mid bass, but it can sound quite congested, especially with rock and metal. It needs quite a bit of customization out of the box to sound as good as the Air Pro 4. The closest comparison is probably the Realme Buds Air 5 Pro or Buds Air 6 Pro, which has a similarly warm tuning, although there's a little bit less bass and more emphasis on the mid range. Female vocals are slightly less prominent, but there is a little bit more air to the sound. As a result, the horizontal staging feels a little bit broader on the Realme, although it doesn't quite sound as natural. It puts the earphone mid table when it comes to sound amongst those better performers in the $100 category. This is a big improvement over the Air Pro 3, which didn't even get close to the top 10. Customization is one of the metrics that I score sound on. An earphone score particularly highly here with around 30 different presets and a comprehensive custom EQ. You've also got the option of taking a hearing test and then the app will spit out the ideal sound profile based on the results. The sound seems to be influenced very little by the codec selection and due to using that newest Qualcomm chipset you've got lots of options including LDAC for high res audio but also the Aptex family of codecs 
including Aptex Adaptive and Aptex Lossless. So for Android users, regardless of whether you have a Snapdragon chipset phone or not, you're still likely to be getting the best available codec for your device. And it's great that Earphone have allowed you to choose the codec through their app rather than diving into developer options, which let's face it, nobody really wants to have to do. Whilst these high-res codecs are always nice to have, I didn't notice too many real-world differences between any of them, especially when it comes to resolution. You also lose multipoint when you switch to LDAC, so personally, I'd stick to Aptex Adaptive. Both the Air Pro 3 and the Air Pro 4 claim to support LE audio, Although that doesn't translate to a great deal at present, you can't select the LC3 codec, for example. And whilst it does claim that it currently supports AuraCast, that isn't really widespread currently. Again, with LE Audio enabled, you lose quite a bit of functionality, including Google Fast Pair, and there are quite a few devices with known compatibility issues or conflicts. So I think we have to wait a little while longer for more firmware updates and more phones to support some of the benefits the LE Audio brings you that I talked about in that review of the Air Pro 3. Some other features in the app include the ability to toggle game mode, and I found that switching this on and combining it with the Aptex Adaptive Codec got the best results if you're trying to get as low latency as possible doing some casual gaming. You can toggle multipoint and you can see your device list, which again is really handy to know which devices you're connected to at any one time. And I found that switching between those devices was really snappy. You've also got the Find My Earbuds option, which you can trigger through the app. It will play a short sound on either the left or the right ear, and it's actually quite loud. Another area where the Air Pro 4 unquestionably shine is the battery life, which is still very impressive, even with active noise cancellation switched on. I got not far short of 11 hours worth of playtime with ANC switched off, and with ANC on, it still scored over 7 hours. Making lots of calls and switching on certain features like multipoint will naturally erode the battery life, but it seems much less sensitive to stuff like this than the Soundcore Liberty 4NC, for example, which would drop as low as two and a half hours if you switched on high res codecs as well. You get just shy of four additional full recharges with the case as well, taking up to a mammoth 52 hours, which really is quite impressive. The Air Pro 4 have got pretty much every feature you could think of, bar a dedicated spatial sound mode, although that said, most of the ones that I've experienced have been a little bit gimmicky, so I don't think you're losing too much here. In the years spent reviewing TWS, I've lost count of how many times I've given feedback to manufacturers, and they've replied saying absolutely we'll fix it next time around, but they never do. The same can't be said for Earfun though, who have improved the case design, the ergonomics, the active noise cancellation, and most importantly, the sound. They've got all the basics covered here, offering multi-point connectivity, lots of different codecs, in-ear detection sensors, wireless charging, quick charge, and excellent battery life both single use and with the case. As you'll know from my reviews, there's no outright winner when it comes to selecting the best bud under $100, but as a value package, the Air Pro 4 definitely offer you a very compelling option. What do you think of the Air Pro 4? Do leave your comments in the comments section below. Give the video a like if you found it useful, if you enjoyed it, both or neither, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It's Reagan Cipher, signing off.